Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the HETS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our 2022 Best Practices Showcase, Celebrating Technology, Innovation for Hispanic Success in Higher Education. My name is Imari Santiago, and I will be introducing the speaker for the breakout session of this room. Before we begin, we request your support with the following. Please change your mobiles to silent Make sure mode they're to, not in the bedroom so they don't to have your full attention and avoid interruptions this session will be recorded and for those who join us virtually please remain muted this presentation will be in english but we have closed captioning available we will have time for questions at the end of the presentation and finally we invite you to see the qr code that the staff will share to all participants to complete the electronic evaluation form for this session before you leave the room for virtual participants the links to the session to the evaluations will be available in the chat please make sure you select the time and date for this session for feedback and recommendations are very important to heads now we're ready to start the title of this presentation is make the connection accelerate initiatives with online and hybrid education the please welcome our presenter audra barrett from tarrant county college this presentation will be virtual audra the thank <laughs> thank you very very much and thank you for um allowing me to speak with you and have a conversation with you this morning uh, I appreciate the HETS board and all that HETS does, and I think we are ready to get started. So some just some outcomes of this meeting that we that I hope that you will leave with uh, understanding the connect campus recognizing weekend college and reviewing types of online instruction and then demonstrating the types of quality controls at Tarrant uh, County College Connect Campus, and then an appreciation for some of the data that we're gonna show you at the end. So where is Tarrant County College and Connect Campus? So we are located in Texas and we're in the central part of Texas. So if you go down south, you run into areas of Austin, Texas and San Antonio. And if you go further central and perhaps a little west, you run into Tarrant County. We have surrounding counties of Denton, Collin, Dallas, Ellis, Johnson, Parker, and Wise. So that gives you a, a bit of an idea of where we're located. We are a six campus um, college and Tarrant County College has and holds Connect Campus, which is the virtual campus of Tarrant County College. So what is Connect Campus? Currently, we have 555 faculty teaching online, and 20 of those are full time. We have 37 online programs with 13 degrees, 24 certificates, and nine fields of study. Our enrollment this spring currently is at 30,727, and we are still enrolling students for monthly start classes and classes for weekend college that begin in March. And you'll see below that for weekend college, we, it, we have enrolled thus far 2,071 students. That um, number, equals about 15,140 unduplicated students. So that kind of gives you an idea of the size of Connect Campus and the amount of students we serve. Down below that is our various degrees that we offer at Connect Campus. And here is a timeline of when Connect Campus first got started in 2013 with the president, uh, Dr. Carlos Morales, and he was the founding president and is still moving that campus forward with many different initiatives. 
And this just gives you a brief overview of all of the things that have been implemented since Connect's campus inception. So I'm gonna let this play just a little bit. Gives you an idea of when we offered what are called shortened semester winter semester courses. Those are courses offered between semesters. When we began our virtual Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, when we moved into where we are, which is the Trinity River campus, Tarrant um, campus holds, Trinity River campus holds Connect Campus. So that gives you an idea of the timeline of from inception to where we are, not right currently, because we kind of stopped the timeline before now. So I wanna talk and spend a little bit of time on Weekend College. I am the director of Weekend College for Connect Campus. And Weekend College was established with a substantive change in 2014. Our accrediting body is um, SACS COC, or the Southern Association of accreditation. And so we had to go through a, a formal accreditation in order to offer what is called weekend college. It's specific for learners managing family and work responsibilities. Weekend college has a very prescribed and set course sequence. So they offer accelerated courses on Friday nights and on Saturdays. And this accelerated sequence is for seven weeks each. Uh, seven weeks fits into each 16 week semester. So for example, students come to class from six o'clock to 7.50 on Friday evenings or eight o'clock to 9.50 on Friday evenings, or they can choose the Saturday option, which is nine to 10.50 or 12 to 1.50. And the way this works is they just come to campus once a week, one Friday night or one Saturday block for seven weeks. The rest of their work is done asynchronously online. So again, the course sequence, Weekend College is a seven week accelerated program. The accelerated time to a degree or certification is 25% hybrid, like I just stated in the previous slide. We also offer synchronous formats. So those timeframes that I mentioned in the previous slide, they would meet those timeframes virtually real time through Microsoft Teams, and the rest of the work would be done asynchronously. So about 25% is done hybrid synchronous and 75% is done asynchronously. Currently, the weekend college offers an accelerated degree format for associates of arts. So students can complete their associate of arts classes toward an associate of science. So we have most of the sciences offered through Weekend College, but some of the upper level sciences, students will have to hop out of Weekend College and take those either face-to-face -face or 100% online asynchronously. We do offer an accounting clerk one certification. 
and a cybersecurity one certification. And it's planned and outlined with both of those certifications that students begin to build what are called stackable credentials. So students will stack accounting clerk one, perhaps accounting clerk three, as they are moving their way to that associate of science degree. The same with cybersecurity. They start with cybersecurity one and they stack um, hacking on top of that. And that is another, um, that is another uh, credential that they earn or a certification. And that all leads to an AAS in cybersecurity. So what do students say? I'm gonna play a short video so you can get an idea. And it may just be that you have to read the closed caption if you cannot hear the video, I do apologize for that. But we've got some students talking about their experiences in weekend college. Okay, and I understand that um, the closed captionings did not come through. So I'm gonna do just a brief overview of what those two uh, students were talking about. Basically, both of those students were in a situation where they had full-time responsibilities, where it be job, family, what have you. And so they didn't really fit into the mold of coming to college between nine and three, let's say. And so the weekend college allowed these students an opportunity to be in a smaller class size, to be with, if you will, a cohort of students that were moving through trying to obtain their credential or their degree. And they spoke about the opportunities that this allowed them Otherwise, they didn't feel that they would have ever been able to go to college, uh, complete a certification or complete a degree. And both of these students felt like that college wasn't a place for them or they didn't feel that college would ever be attainable. And through the coaching, advising, uh, and working with these students and and undergirding the support and building confidence, both of these students were able to earn an Associate of Arts degree and move on. And I, again, I do apologize that that uh, video did not uh, come through clearly or at all, I should say. 
So why do we want to offer these accelerated formats? Why are they so important? According to research, a growing number of research studies indicate that student success when measured in terms of grades is higher in compressed courses than in a full length semester. And I can certainly speak to that. I've taught uh, English as a second language. I have taught uh, English composition, and I am currently teaching student uh, success courses. And I have found from an instructor point of view that doing these accelerated classes, students tend to stay on task. Uh, there's usually something or multiple assignments due every day. And the amount of engagement and the amount of responsibility and the amount of time on coursework gets the students really involved in the class and really doesn't allow them any time to slack off, if you will, or forget an assignment or anything like that, because the format is moving so quickly. And it's not that we are um, getting rid of assignments in this accelerated format. It's not that we're decreasing rigor. It is we're just squeezing all of that in a shortened semester so students can move through this at a, at a faster pace and get to where they're wanting to go in their educational journey. Again, shortened courses help students feel they can move rapidly toward their goals as opposed to stretching it out over years and years. I think in community colleges, most students um, uh, receive their degree, it takes them between five and six years, where in accelerated formats, you cut that almost in half. And research indicates that the quality of learning and the attitudes of students in accelerated programs are similar or superior to those in traditional programs. So there's just some research behind that accelerated format. So talking about various modalities, hybrid to synchronous. So during the pandemic, the weekend college did not offer synchronous courses and we had to pivot. We pivot and we, because the campus did close down, we did have that arm of Connect Campus that offers asynchronous courses. And then the other arm is the weekend college, which as I've stated previously, met on campus one day a week. So what we did is we pivot and began to offer that synchronously. So let me be clear, it's not remote learning where you take an on-campus class and it is pushed online. Um, that's remote learning. This is taking an async part of an asynchronous class and a hybrid class and moving it to synchronous. So it's very deliberate. Uh, the, the instructors that te teach this, and we're going to get into this later down the road, um, are, are granted professional development and go through certification. But we began to teach synchronous online where students would have an experience online real-time sessions at a set time. And uh, what we found is students wholeheartedly embraced that format. Even now that we've gone back to hybrid, we still offer a very robust selection of synchronous online courses through Weekend College because it seems to be a heavy student preference. And we, of course, want to always build a student-centric schedule so we're meeting the students' needs. So again, we offer instructor support through intentional professional development. And fall 21, we did move back to hybrid, 
but like as I stated, we kept the synchronous courses too. And we're investigating high flex courses so we can still push the boundaries and really look at various and multiple formats to be offering students from hybrid to synchronous to perhaps high flex. So what kind of quality controls do we have in place? We have instructional design services. So we have a team at Connect Campus of instructional designers that help faculty and help adjunct faculty. We have continuous training. So all instructors, whether they teach on the e-learning side, which is the asynchronous side, or the weekend college side, which is the hybrid synchronous side, they go through what's called an online instructor certification. And this is a course in Canvas, and it is modeled off of Quality Matters. And instructors are mandated to go and finish various modules in that course in order to be able to teach either e-learning classes or weekend college classes. We have what are called peer developed courses. These are courses where a group of faculty come together and they create the online course environment from stop to end. So instructors that are teaching through the Connect Campus, whether asynchronously, synchronously, or hybrid, use these peer developed courses. They can certainly add to them, but they cannot take away from them because they are built in a circular fashion. So assessment meets readings, meets um, discussion boards, meets journaling. They all come together and follow, again, the quality matters standards. We have constructed activities and assessments that are part of that peer developed course. We also, in the peer developed course, um, expand out all lessons plan. They are ADA compliant, and we offer various discussion forums. We also have what are called e-faculty coaches. And these are coaches, uh, faculty uh, that are assigned to certain classes. And perhaps a, it is an instructor that is brand new to connect, or perhaps it is an instructor that is needing some improvement. And it's, it's not about penalizing anybody. It's not about that at all. It's about process of improvement. And it's about helping faculty be the best that they can be. And these coaches, again, work off the QM rubric and they work individually with faculty members to try and help improve their online course or their uh, canvas shell, if you will. Uh, all of our students are required to take an online readiness assessment. We uh, use smarter measures, and before a student can even register, they must take this assessment. A hold is placed on their uh, um, on their transcript. Not it's not their transcript, but a hold is placed to where they are unable to register for an asynchronous or synchronous class until they complete this online readiness assessment. And again, it's not about putting up barriers or penalizing students. It's really about ensuring that students feel confident when they go into that uh, virtual environment that they understand the mechanisms that are going to be that are going to take place and that are going to be required of them. Our faculty uh, create what are called lunch and learns, and these are all faculty driven professional development opportunities that bring faculty together on a topic and everybody's invited. I've been to a bunch of lunch and learns and they enjoy lunch while getting some professional development. 
And then every fall and spring, we have what's called Connections Week. And during this week, Dr. Morales and our VP of Academics, uh, Dr. Pearson, they speak at Connections Week. Then we have usually an outside guest speaker join us and, and talk about various subjects. And then throughout the week, we have professional development opportunities. And this is just some information about what the instructional support uh, those instructional designers can provide. They provide course help. They provide learning through various webinars and they provide resources. So they have, they've created what is called an instructional resource hub. And it's where instructors can go to find various resources. Like how do I teach a synchronous class? How do I get my students engaged? How do I ensure that they come to that virtual time? And all of this is in that instructional resource hub along with various other things as well. And then we offer Canvas training. There's a Canvas resource array. All of those technical what to do and how to do it is offered there. And then TCC Connect has a, a campus faculty guide. And in this guide, it talks to the faculty and to the adjunct instructors about what is needed to be a successful instructor, how to turn in grades, how to choose a textbook. Um, so it, it's really a guide to help them from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester. And it goes through and really provides them with a checklist uh, from the beginning to the end. And uh, the, the course help, uh, a lot of time is spent on regular and substantive interaction. That's a new law that has come into place that really requires um, regular and, and robust, if you will, interactions within that online environment. So they are really working hard to ensure that all of the courses whether asynchronous or synchronous or hybrid, have a robust faculty engagement. And we also have put together in Canvas a student resource hub. This is very, very helpful for students. So here students will find transfer information, all the information about Transfer Center, they will find information about HETS and the opportunities that HETS supplies for students. It, they will also uh, be given information about tutoring. Um, it's about advising, anything that we feel that is needed for a student's entering and being successful in their educational journey can be found in this student resource hub. And what I want to say about these hubs is what's really nice is a lot of times um, as a student, they have to go through and hunt and peck, if you will, to find information and go to various places. And, and sometimes they get frustrated and they're just like, well, this is just too much work. I'm, I'm going to stop right here. What these resource hubs allow for both students and instructors is, if you will, a one-stop shop. And so students can go and faculty can go to these areas and it really meets the needs because it's thinking holistically about what exactly do students need? What exactly do instructors need? And it puts it in one resource hub. So we do have one for Connect Campus, and it's the TCC Connect Campus HQ or headquarters. And all of that is, again, all of information for instructors is found there. 
we do have an instructional resource hub, and that is also in the TCC Connect Campus headquarters. And again, that's going to go back to all of the information that I shared here is going to be in that instructional resource hub. It's a hub by itself, but again, like I said, it's also inside the TCC Connect Campus headquarters. And let me go back a little bit to e-faculty coaching. So it's not mandatory, but it is strongly encouraged because of the benefits. So the goal of e-faculty coaching is to, to support instructors and provide objective, non-evaluative, so they're not evaluating the instructor on how they teach or anything like that. It's non-punitive support and it's about design and delivery and continual improvement of the online environment. And we focus on e-faculty coaches. I've mentioned several times quality matters, but we really look at the standards one, five, six, and seven. So a couple of questions that uh, instructors also uh, many times have is why was my class selected? Are there concerns about me as an instructor? And then uh, to kind of ease everybody, uh, every course at Connect Campus is observed eventually because all courses go through this on a rotating basis. And it is not a formal performance appraisal or evaluation. This sits outside, it is separate. And the coaches complete this all digitally and they're really trying to align those quality matter standards like I mentioned uh, above. And so they meet virtually with their instructors. They go in virtually inside their classes classrooms. So again, all of this do is done through digital observation. And then it usually is about two to three times that they meet uh, during a given term. And the coaches share data with the instructors, or they might ask for a brief virtual meeting so they can talk about what they found and uh, what perhaps are some processes for improvement, but they want to make sure that they're giving instructors quality feedback, but without consuming too much of the instructor's time. So let's dive a little bit into some data. So for me, data means data numbers and accountability. And I often talk about what is the DNA? What is your DNA of your program or your overall institution? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the DNA of Weekend College. So data not only provides us with valuable information, but it also is there to create a narrative. It, that narrative directs us to improvements and to change. And so we don't wanna be data saturated. Uh, we don't want to be data driven, but we want to be data informed. So we can take that information for improvement. So being data formed is a great way to build and grow and begin process change when needed. So this gives you an idea about TCC Connect Campus enrollment as of spring. And this uh, snapshot was as of January 18th, uh, 2022. And as you can see, Connect offers various forms of semester links. So their 16 week classes are offered asynchronously. And then they offer 12 week, they offer eight week, 
Then there's that winter mester course, which is in between spring and fall. And then we have the weekend college. We also provide monthly start dates. And then we have career and technical education courses. And lastly, dual credit online. And so you can see Connect Campus offers a wide variety of different formats. So it provides students with a highway to be able to choose when they want to enter and when they want to exit. And they can take various modalities or various times, like they could take an eight week and a 16 week course. They don't have to choose just eight week courses. They don't have to choose just weekend college. So this gives us a breakdown of the enrollments currently at 30,000 plus, and the a number of contact hours generated from students through the Connect campus, and then unduplicated students. Hey, Audra, just letting you know we're at the 10 minute mark. Okay, thank you. And then we have an overall growth in enrollment. So this just shows you the trajectory of how we've been going from fall 2018 to now. And I know this is like horrible for PowerPoint and you're probably thinking, why in the world did she put that graphic up? So what did that screen say? Uh, basically for week in college, the first seven weeks we offered, we added 24 additional sections. The second seven weeks, we created 17 additional sections. And again, that's that movement to synchronous. We're up by 604 students. And in the second seven weeks, up by 163 students. And something to really pinpoint on through both asynchronous and through weekend college is that the success rates run in the 70s and sometimes in the high 70s. And that for online modality is a very nice sweet number. Of course, we're always looking to improve that. And overall retention rate, we're looking at the high 80, 89 to in, into the 90 percent. And here's just a breakdown by race and ethnic ethnicity of the students that uh, are engaged with us. And just some more success data and enrollment numbers about weekend college. Again, we want to be data informed so we can always know how to pivot, how to shift, and how to make sure we're doing what we need to do for students and for their success. And because of the fruits of our labor and everything that I've been talking about today, um, we are one of the top online colleges. And uh, we're very proud of this uh, because it, it really takes a village to create an atmosphere of innovation and about momentum to continue to move forward. So these are just some of the accolades that we have received. And that concludes my presentation. And so I am open to questions or comments. And again, thank you so much for allowing me to present today. Um, I have, I, I show great, great appreciation and uh, the help that HETS has provided me and the opportunity that HETS has provided me uh, to talk about Connect Campus. It's our pleasure having you as a host. Uh, any questions? No? How about online? If you have any questions online, you can just type them out or just unmute your mic.
Okay, so online we have some good feedback. Let me, before everyone leaves, I'm going to put on the chat the link to the virtual uh, evaluation. So please do not leave without filling that out. There we go. I have. There we go. I sent it. Please make sure to fill that out. This is our 1030 session on February 4th. If there are no further questions, I will conclude the recording. So thank you so much, Audra, for that presentation. It was very insightful to all that TCC does. And I hope we see you again here at HETS. Thank you very, very much.